What do we stand for? For Michelle, it was justice, freedom, all of the cool and hip words. We all think we're the good guys. They just don't do bad things because they just feel like it. They do them because they think they're good things. Did Michelle do a good thing? Many people didn't think so. But for Michelle, what she was doing was standing up to injustice. And in her opinion, she was doing good. It was late evening. She was out for a jog. A stranger pulled up and asked her if she needed a ride. She politely refused. Moments later, BAM! Car crash. Two white guys and the guy who offered her a ride earlier. She didn't see the crash. She doesn't know who was at fault. Nevertheless, she's gotta be a good Samaritan and make sure everything's okay. Immediately, the white guys confront the black guy. Michelle tries to de-escalate the situation, but end up getting pushed around. Finally, one of the white guys punches the black guy. That's when Michelle had enough. She had to defend the black guy, not because he was black, but because no one should be victim to unprovoked violence, and she believed that violence is only acceptable when it comes to self-defense and defense of others. Michelle pulled out a pepper spray canister. She sprayed the guy who threw a punch, but Michelle made the mistake that she will forever remember. She let his accomplice get behind her. Surely enough, she got tackled and brutally beaten. A mysterious figure appeared of Eastern European descent. It came from the woodworks and saved Michelle from being beaten to death just enough to call away and cry for help. Finally, ambulance and police was on scene. At this point, Michelle still believed in justice and that police would never arrest an innocent person. So when she was offered an option to leave, she decided to stay to ensure that the white man who attacked her and the innocent driver would go to jail. At first, the questioning seemed routine. The officer showed no signs of bias and simply listened to both parties. Yet, he came to the conclusion that everyone would be arrested for mutual combat. Michelle felt this was unfair, since neither she nor the blackmail ever threw a single punch. And she only deployed pepper spray to protect the black male from being attacked. None of the white males had any serious injuries on them. This is unfair, shouted Michelle. Driven around like a criminal, all for defending someone. That's the price you pay when you're a good Samaritan, it appeared. Michelle didn't have any of that. She had media on her side. Independent news media. She had a loud mouth, a loud voice, she was going to use it. Whatever it took, everyone would forever remember his name. Deputy Ramirez. Badge number 144. The internal affairs of Wood disappeared. Lost as the departments were changing. Michelle wanted to voice her concerns that the police could not always be relied on, that it was important to weed out the corrupt officers. In Michelle's mind, what Ramirez did was no mistake, it was corruption. A lot of people hold the belief that they can trust their law enforcement agencies, despite the fact that the United States court has ruled several times that police do not have any obligation to serve and protect. She was fighting an uphill battle, a fight from two fronts. One point was that she needed to get her record cleared so that maybe, just maybe, one day, she can receive a weapons license so she stops being treated like a criminal every time there's a self-defense shooting. She already got her murder charges expulged from her record, but doing so requires some trust from the police department, and that's where the other phone came, the people. You see, in America there are a lot of people who don't want people owning guns without the license, especially ex-felons. At the same time, there are criminals who want easier access to guns because they want to rob and murder with them. Michelle was a rare case of a felon who simply wanted to be able to protect her life. In her mind, a gun is what she needed, and that's what she fought for. Those who opposed were smart. They pretended to be a part of the cause, and instead of peacefully protesting, decided to start riots. Of course, all of this was immediately blamed on Michelle, and she was arrested multiple times for inciting riots, despite never doing so. One time, she asked people to bring guns to a protest about the rights of the people to bear arms. And despite the fact that guns were allegedly an inherent right of every US citizen, 
like freedom of speech and freedom of expression, she was arrested for inciting violence. This association of guns means violence is very inbred into people's minds. If you don't have a license, you're much more likely to be charged with murder in a self-defense scenario. Despite the fact that the murder charge only cares about the reason and intent behind taking someone's life, not what weapon was used or whether the weapon was legal. There's only one charge that cares about that, and that's the possession of an unlicensed weapon charge. Michelle found herself doing time for the charge a lot. Thankfully, it was only a small, insignificant misdemeanor that Michelle felt was a worthwhile exchange for being able to defend her life. But it didn't help her goal of trying to be a law-abiding citizen with a legitimate source of income. Anybody who looked at Michelle saw her as a criminal, and there were very few volunteers who saw past her criminal record and realized she was just trying to rehabilitate and become citizen worthy of society while being able to defend herself. Of course, that's the cost you pay. The cost of independence. Thank you for watching.